Hi guys, this is Pastillion. Welcome to another Escape for Taco video. Today we're talking about the white patch 0.14, freshly coming from Escape from Taco. The servers are down right now. By the time you watch this video, it's going to be uh, either the servers will be up or they'll still be down and we're waiting for it to go up. But we're going to go over the patch notes. Everything's going to be coming in the new white. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. All right, starting up with the patch notes. Uh, we present the Escape for Taco patch notes. 4.14, there will be a white with the patch. The update will not affect the Escape from Taco Arena or player progression. All right, what I want to do, take note of here, before we go any further, is I honestly think that this is kind of lame for the fact that they'll be wiping Escape from Taco, doing the patch, doing all these new mechanics, and those mechanics won't be going over to Arena. So you won't be getting the vaulting, you won't be getting the new recall system and all that. So it's going to be like you're playing one game with a whole new mechanics and systems, and then you'll be playing Arena and it'll be totally different. The wipe itself for Arena, I don't think will happen until they do the full rollout and everyone gets access. So I think that will happen sometime in January, probably the end of January, maybe sometime in 2025. I don't know, but, um, you know, hopefully one day everyone will have access to their Arena account. And yeah, that's what I think the plan is with Arena. But let's go over these patch notes for patch point 12. Sorry, point 14. Oh my God. I'm so used to saying point 12. Yes, and I know next year is 2024, but I'm saying by 2025. Anyway. <clears throat> Ground Zero. So this location is for the new players. Ground Zero location situated in the city center of Tarkov has been added to the game. Location features a large number of infrastructure facilities of the modern city, banks, cafes, restaurants, stores, pharmacies, and so on. All this is towered by the skyscrapers of Tarkov. In the very center of the location is the main Russian branch office of Terror Group and where the original conflict began. And the most violent clashes between USEC PMC operatives and Omon, who the hell is Omon, took place on the facility's premises. I'm guessing it's like a new faction. Here we go, more lore. Location intended for beginning players from zero levels one to 20. So I think flea market should still be level 15. They might push it up to 20, I don't know. Hopefully not. But yeah, from one to 20, we'll be able to have access from that. Uh, the PMCs of higher level 20 will not be able to access the location. Scouts will have access to the location at any player level. So you can be at PMC level, I don't know, like 50 and you'll still have access. Apparently, chat's saying Omon is the Russian police special forces. There you go. New starter quests have been added to the location. Visual cues for new players have been added to the location. Quest debut checking, renamed to background check, shortage, supplier, gunsmith part one, receive updated text descriptions. So I think the focus will be to get everyone to, you know, do these starting quests in that area. I will be on the start of the wipe playing in this no new area uh, for the first, I don't know, five or 10 raids to try and do these new quests. Uh, and also check it out. New boss, Colon Tay. A new boss, Colon Tay, has been added to Streets of Tarkov. He is the former police of the MVD, the Ministry of Internal Affairs. During his service in law enforcement, he had a reputation as a vile man whose behavior was sometimes feared by his co-workers. During his work, he often resorted to his favorite method of interrogation, a rubber baton, as well as an other non-statutory pressure on someone who was not to his liking. Thanks to his physical strength and bold temperament, after the events of Terror Group scandal, he formed a gang and began to do what he himself was recently supposed to combat, looting and banditry. However, even before the conflict, he often provided protection to local businessmen. For example, his good relations with Caban are well known. Comente has a small number of guards, prefers to stay in one position and occasionally patrols his territory. If he feels he has the upper hand, he may switch to his police baton. He lives in the area around Klimov Shopping Mall and the Tarkov Academy of Ministry Internal Affairs. So Klimov is the one where that key is, that bloody key or whatever it's called, the blooded key, and the Klimov like, like flare extract. The, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, I'm not overly sure, unless that's the one where uh, it's towards the... I just, I just need to go map genie for this, I think. All right. So, for example, this is the climb of Mall. I'd imagine it's this building here near the expo. It's the internal affairs area or around the back here. So, I think he'll be up. He'll be in this section here. I don't believe there's going to be a expansion of streets in this one. Caban's new guards. Boss Caban is joined his, by his closest associate, Bazmarch and Gus. Since the time of Caban's activity involvement in the business, they have served as his loyal associates, solving many delicate issues for him. Their loyal services and their exuberant character made them made them his most trusted confidence. In their spare time, these two dandies like to dress up as Ragman's place and li organize legal street races through the streets of Tarkov in tuned cars from Gaban's dealerships. Basmach and Gus always stay close to Gaban and charge into battle for him. They prefer their unique clothing 
to their battle gear. Though there are occasional ex exceptions, Bazmarch has a special fondness for machetes and Gus has a crowbar. Fair enough. Guess we're going to GTA style. So there's going to be two new guards and for Cabana. He obviously is one of the easiest bosses to farm and he gives so much XP. I'm, I'm honestly not surprised that they're actually doing something to make it a bit easier. Sorry, make it a bit harder. So yeah, that's pretty much all I think we're going to see for streets is these two. Plus, Ground Zero is technically part of streets, but obviously it's, it's a separate map. Shoreline rework. Yeah, you know, don't you think it's really interesting where they like they add a new map called Ground Zero, which was never on the the, the road map, and all of a sudden they're like, we're going to add a new area called Ground Zero, and it's going to be part of streets. Oh, the BTR, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Shoreline rework, visually reworked most of the landscape, keeping the main points of interest intact. So I, that's like the resort, you know, the village and that kind of stuff. Added a new area, a small cattle farm, which is home to smugglers and scavs. I would imagine this would probably be in that big open area between the radar and path the lighthouse. Sorry, path to customs, road to customs, uh, or down towards the terminal map area. Zoom in a bit. For you, sir, anything. How's that? Is that better? You want a bit more? Updated the light sources, optimized most of the location, completely redesigning the culling system. Sure. Reworked the location borders, concrete fences replaced by minefields and snipers in most areas. The location is also slightly expanded in some areas. So that would be the wall from the bunker out towards path the lighthouse and also towards um road to road to customs we work some points of interest including the additional of new quests and activities in in several pr previously empty zones that might make some of the peacekeeper quests a little bit slower or faster there was a lot of peacekeeper quests that just took us to the resort some areas have been reworked to improve gameplay added a river crossing reworked almost all elevations and sniper positions as well as the scav areas of interest. Cool. Added a new, so added more than 30 new containers and Jaeger stashes. Nice. Fixed over 1,200 visual and minor bugs. How long were those 1,200 visual and minor bugs there? Honestly, I just wish they'd take away all their audio issues. Get rid of the occlusion zones of audio and just let us hear through the floors properly. New weapons, equipment, loot. Added a number of new items, weapon uh, modifications, equipment, and customization. Uh, there's the KBP, which is the 9A91, 9x39. There's the VSK, which is also a 9x39. The Sig Spear, which is in 6.8x51. We don't, we don't, we haven't had a 6.8x51. That's a new caliber. <laughs> I, I only, and <laughs> let me put it this way. I have no issues them adding more guns, but I'm kind of happy that they've got a lot of guns already in Tarkov. So it's like, well, you know, any, any new guns is like, yeah, it's cool, but just finish the game kind of thing. That's how my brain kind of works. Adding new calibers is kind of frustrating, if anything. But there's also those gun nuts that get so excited. The thing is, every time they add a new caliber or a new gun, it's usually OP. It's usually ridiculously broken, and then they dial back heaps. Except for, I don't think the RPD and RPDN is going to be OP. I think it, from what we saw in that video, it had way too much recoil. Updated the models and animations of the SKS. Hopefully the point aim is still on point because that's one of the easiest guns in the game to point aim, the SKS. Changes in new mo mechanics. Achievements. An achievement system has been added to the game. Players will receive achievements upon completing various objectives. Earned achievements will not be lost with wipes. You can view earned achievements on the achievements tab in the character screen. Hall of Fame. A new hideout ho uh, zone. Hall of Fame has been added to the game. The zone serves as a place where you can display mementos. For, for displaying the dog tags of players of the opposite faction killed by your PMC, you get a bonus to combat skill leveling. The higher the level of the elimina eliminated player, the greater the skill bonus. You can add items to your favorites. Such items will be displayed in your profile picture. So this is preset, so I believe. It means you can add like, you know, a gunsmith preset and your mate can actually view that. So I believe you're meant to be able to right click a friend in the friend list and then view their presets or their you know, items that pro displayed on their profile. New hitboxes and armor system. All right, before I read this, before I read all of this for the armor and hitboxes, right? I'm just gonna say, I think it's gonna cause two things. One, frustration that we're gonna have to repair each individual plate and it's gonna be really frustrating to try and do it. And two, it's going to increase the time to kill. All right. <sighs> I should have got some water before reading this. <clears throat> New hitboxes and armor system. Hitboxes. The head is divided into separate simple hit zones, which coincide with the protection zones of helmets and masks. Three hit zones have been added to the head area. Front neck, throat, back neck, neck, and a face collider. Wonderful. I didn't get head eyes. I got throated. <laughs> Thorax and stomach hit zones are divided into front, back, and sides. The pelvic hit zones are divided into front, groin, and back buttocks. Hits to these zones cause damage to the stomach zone. Forearm hit zones have been reduced to di in diameter. <laughs> I can't fathom. 
All right. Uh, just got throated. Head throated. The death screen now shows more detailed information about the area that was, that was fatally wounded. For example, thorax, upper back. Armor. 37 ballistic plates have been added to the game. Seven for the chest, six for the rear section, 20 universal plates for the chest and rear sections, and four for the side sections. Uh, ballistic plates have their own parameters specific to armor. Strength material, armor damage, absorption, ricochet parameters, armor type. Ballistic plates are divided into different formats depending on the size and the format of the armor section. Ballistic plates cannot be inserted or removed while wearing the body armor. It must be removed first, which means it does sound like you could for, or you could remove plates whilst in the actual raid. I might be wrong with that. Uh, the visual appearance of the ballistic plate depends on its durability. Ballistic plates can spawn in appropriate areas and can containers on locations. Ballistic plates are affected by the light armor and heavy armor skill depending on the type of ballistic plates, light and heavy. Added separate ballistic plate zones on the character visual matching the location of the body armor. All hit registration zones of the ballistic plates of the same format have the same position in all body armor and plate carriers with the slots for this plate format. The dimensions of the ballistic plate zones are the same as the average dimensions of real ballistic plates on the format. So I, this is the understanding that it's only going to cover where it shows. I know Moxie, words. So if it's if it's only covers your, your nipples, you only have protection over your nipples. If it covers your whole thorax down to your your, 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 your crutch, your cock. then you'll have protection all the way down to your cock. All right. Ballistic plate slots and integrated armor slots have been added to body armor vests and plate carriers. All ballistic plates of the corresponding format can be installed in the armor plate slots. The slots of some armor plates can be fitted with plates of several formats. For example, the chest section of the ANA Tactical M2 plate carrier can be fitted with the SAPI and granite format plates. So just because someone wearing the green NR Tactical M2 plank carrier doesn't mean it's a class 4 armor. It's going to make some of this stuff very interesting when it comes to like, we're going to, you know, watching. So uh, when you go loot someone, you're like, yeah, they're wearing the class 4 one or they're going to wear the class 5 one. You told me to read the patch notes. Now you want me to watch the trailer. All right. We'll watch the trailer once and then we'll go back and keep reading the patch notes because then we might actually see stuff. Catch no break. That's too loud. It's fucking loud, isn't it? Wish my taco looked as good as this. You got to use MIP streaming, apparently. Is that too loud? I'll turn it down a little bit. Seems really loud. Oh, it's gonna get really loud actually on BSG. I don't know why they showed that in slow motion. Oh, it's getting in. Where I just saw a bald operator with a beard. Usually at the end, they show the boss. I don't know why they're showing interchange. It doesn't look like there's anywhere near as much recoil, hey? I shouldn't stop yet. Okay, now they'll show the boss right this second. No? No, there's still time. Five more seconds. Oh, flash me with him. 
Oh, look at this. This site is normally atrocious. Watch the recall on that. That's barely any recall on that. All right, where do we start? So this is obviously the ground zero area. They forgot to show shoulder swapping. No, it looked like there's a couple of left-handed pigs. Because Matt will be dead after a month. But it, okay, so let's pause on that note. It's for zeros to 20. After a month, if you're coming late to Tarkov and you just want to actually like get through that initial starting crap, that's good. You know, it gives you an opportunity that you actually can get your quest done and you're not going to get stomped by high-level players. Also means if you get a friend that's new to the game, they're not going to be going to be like, oh man, like every time I play, I'm just trying to like learn. Like imagine Michael late wipe playing off stream trying to figure out how to play Tarkov. He would be so bad. At least it gives him the opportunity where other people were also new and can vote and go, bruh, I'm level three, I'm still struggling. And then someone might be like, hey, I'll give you a hand. And then they'll find out it's Michael. And then, I don't know, he'll convert him to something like Kale Stan. And then, you know what I mean? I think it'll actually be a really good map for people. By the way, that looks like a new backpack. I could be wrong. It looks like a camping bag, a big camping bag. This would be abused so much. There'll be tons of gri griffers. I mean, griefers. That, see that bag there? That, that looks like a new bag. What about a level locked map? It is level locked. One to 20. Takes three months for me to get level 15. We'll just give you a chance. This is a Reese T with a... That's probably the RPD. Labs should be level lock, level lock. The fact that they let you scav in later is going to be toxic. Maybe. Maybe. That's a cactus. They said the loot was sucks at wild hide level playing go there. That looks like a left-handed peak to me. Like left-handed hip fire. Because normally when you... When you left lean, your gun doesn't stick that far left. So that looks to me looks like a left-handed hip fire. No ground zero sounds compl seems completely useless. If you're a veteran, it won't be overly exciting. I think if you've if you've been playing the game for a long time, ground zero will be like, yeah, I got my quest done, I've moved off. Um, but if you're new to the game, ground zero is going to be game changing. It's going to be absolutely game changing. And obviously that was vaulting. This looks like slow motion. I don't understand why they've done slow motion here. And it doesn't look like there's any changes to um to night vision. He's like full auto on the uh is the RPD or whatever we had the one we already got. I think the most notable thing that I've seen is the recoil looks a lot less. Once they start showing you them ADSing. There's a lot of hip fire up until this point. So there was a reference to the new blind firing. See this? So previously it was kind of like that. Previously, it was like that. Now, it's like that. I don't know if it's going to be better or not. We'll see. A lot of this trail seems in slow-mo. When you look, look, you can see it. Yeah. Maybe because it'll make the frames look better. They probably recorded it at like 120 FPS. So, that way, it looks really smooth. That's probably another left-handed peak there. That, see, that looks way further left than normal to me. But two minutes in, we've barely seen any ADS shooting, though. What happens if you get level 20 and didn't finish the ground zero quest? I don't think they're going to be limited to just ground zero, though. That was single fire. This is all hip fire stuff. There you go. That, that's already our first glimpse of full auto. And it's the initial burst. Watch the initial burst too. Right here. Watch this one. Coming now. Like that was like nearly no recoil. Whereas in the past, it would be like, Hut! on the first shot. Like it wasn't locked into your shoulder. Anyone who's actually done a lot of shooting um, will know that if it's not locked into your shoulder, the initial burst kicks up heaps. So it looks like they actually locked it into their shoulder. when, it, Like you're, you're pulling it back when you're actually shooting. That's heaps low, lower recoil there. 
Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's, I didn't think really there's that much to look at in that, to be honest. Don't hate me for saying that. I didn't really think there was that much to look at. There was a lot of like just teasers of the new map, but let's finish reading these exuberantly long patch notes. Recall looks good. Vaulting looks clean. Let's see how it goes, eh? Wow, Pest, are you excited or what? Listen, I'll be excited when I'm actually excited. All right, I don't fake shit. That's one thing you won't see in my stream. I won't be like, ah! When it, like, something jumps out at me, I'm not, that's not me, all right? I'm just not like that. It's just not me. Come on, fake it. Listen, no, I won't say that. No, I can still say it. If I wanted to say someone faking it, I'll just go back to your mum. Oh. Body armor protection is no longer uniform. It now depends on what areas of the body armor visually protects. For example, no body armor plates, sorry, no body armor protects the armpit area. <laughs> I just get shot in the armpit. It's probably, uh, it's probably more for when you're running. The durability of body armor has been converted to the durability of the installed armor. The armored collar that protects the neck heat box has been added for a large number of body armors. Does it protect the throat? Uh, the body armor vest cost, weight, and penalties have been adjusted. Some of the cost, weight, and penalties have been moved to ballistic plates. Integrated armor slots have been added to the large number of helmets. Helmet durability has been converted to the durability of in integrated armor. Integrated armor in body armor and helmets. The protection of the armor and helmets is divided into separate zones depending on which section zone protects. Several, sorry, sometimes several zones. These are slots with integ integrated armor. So this is why I think the team, time to kill might actually increase a lot. So for example, if you're getting sprayed at and uh, you you like do a 360, they're obviously going to have to hit lots of places on your back. So yeah, um, that's where I think that you'll be able to get, you'll be able to, uh, all the time to kill will be changed because of the fact that it'll be like, you know, you'll be doing 360s and you get hit in multiple places. I wonder if all these changes will affect significantly how CPU demanding the game is. Well, every single armor plate is now going to be another item added to the game that's going to be moving as you're running. So yeah, I think it's going to be horrific. I think it'll hit the idea, it'll hit the FPS a little bit. Uh, integrated armor zones have their own separate durability. For example, you can now reduce your opponent's chest zone durability, armor durability, and not damage the durability of armored zone of other armored zones if you shoot them in the chest. So for example, that's what I'm saying. Like I think you'll be able to like get shot turn around, get shot in the back, and the armor will tank, take a hit on both, right? So I think the time to kill initially will uh, be a lot longer, particularly if they're running. I think if they're running, you're gonna hit multiple armor plates and you'll do a lot less damage. But yeah, if you are in trouble and you've just been shot in the chest a heap, technically turning your back to them would be the play while you're reloading. Could be, uh, I think could be the play. I think leg metal will still be strong. In the inspection window, you can see exactly the, which areas of the vest and helmet are protected and what their durability rating is. Integrated armor cannot be removed or replaced. Each integrated armor has its own armor specific setting, durability, material, armor damage, absorption, ricochet parameters, armor type, and, and others. Integrated armor is affected by the light and heavy armor skill, depending on the top of armor. So there's integrated armor and then there's ballistic plate slots. So the integrated armor is the actual armor itself so for example i don't know i'm just guessing but like something like this a and a tactical m2 plate carrier the plates like that will hold a certain amount of plates but there'll be also integrated armor on that body armor as well so ones that you can't replace the plates so that way you just have to repair like normal but then other ones you'll have to replace the, the plates or you'll be able to replace the plates in raid balancing the damage parameters of on various armor materials have been adjusted to reflect the new durability values Kevlar flat fabric, yeah. The plates will give you more weight, no? No, I think they're going to make it so the weight will be... So say previously an armor was 12 kilograms, so I'll make it still 12 kilograms, but it'll be based around all the plates on the body armor. Repairs. When repairing body armor, durability is distributed according to the following priorities. Ballistic plates, chest, back, sides, and then integrated armor, chest, collar, back, pelvis, sides, other. You can also repair ballistic plates as separate items. And when repairing helmets, durability is distributed according to the following parameters. Integrated armor, face, top, eyes, jaw, back of head, ears, throat, other. Integrated armor can receive an enhancement when it's repaired. Chances for armor to receive common and rare enhancements have been repaired while we're being repaired have been increased. All right, that's cool. You had to get level 10, I think it was, in uh, like light armor repair or heavy, light armor and heavy armor skill in the past. So I've been They've said they've increased it at least, so maybe this might even level up a little quicker. Interface. You can now see the durability of different armor zones and ballistic plates by hovering over the durability digit of a vest or helmet. 
This works for flea armor offers. You can see brief information about the presence and quantity of ballistic plates in the posted flea market offers. Slots for ballistic plates integrated armor, if the vest has them, have been added to the vest and helmet inspector screens. The order of the slots is always the same. Armor class is now displayed with the Roman numeral icon on the ballistic plate icon in the armor class list. That's good. So it means you don't have to double click it. Um, you don't have to double click it to check the actual armor class. So you're gonna be like, all right, it's a class four armor, it's a class five armor without having to double click. So quality of life stuff there, making it easier to see stuff on the fleet by just highlighting it. That's good stuff. Good quality of life stuff. I think this is gonna be a nightmare for repairing and, and, and that, but it, it's saying here when you repair it, if you were to like right click the armor and then click repair, it's gonna repair it in this order first, chest, back, sides, chest, blah, 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 blah. Flea market and trading. The flea market ban has been removed from a large number of body armors. Ballistic plates of protection classes five and six cannot be sold on the flea market. So you can't sell plates that are class five and six, but a large amount of the body armors themselves you can sell. So you'll still have to buy plates yourself off the traders, but the armors themselves you can get. Ballistic plates have been added to the inventory of various traders. So yeah, ragman. Obstacle vaulting has been added to the game. There are two types of vaulting. Climbing the obstacle and remaining on it. For example, climbing to a crate to find the enemy from top of, the, of it. Vaulting over an obstacle. For example, jumping over a small fence to take a shortcut. But each of these types has different animations and different heights, different parameters of stamina and arm stamina consumption. The different action speeds depending on the negative effects. During a sprint, you can jump over obstacles without the goal of climbing them. If vaulting is performed while walking, the loudness of such actions will be noticeably lower than jumping and sprinting. For the convenience of overcoming obstacles, an option has been added to the game settings. Vaulting over medium obstacles where you choose auto or hotkey. If you choose auto, your character will climb over medium and low obstacles by himself. If you select hotkey, you will need to press the jump key to initiate vaulting. But this way you can control the character's action more precisely. Your character now stops if he hits a wall whilst walking or sprinting. So wait, if it's on auto, you sprint at a wall or you're like a fence and it will automatically vault it. But if you if you have it off, you will literally run into a wall and stuff and you'll stop. That, I, hmm, no more fake sprinting. I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I, I, know, I know you're talking about sprint baiting, like you sprint into a wall to like, but you start the sprint into in the wall. So I think that, I don't know. Well, I have to wait and see. We'll have to test it out. Definitely something we'll test and we'll notice. Shoulder transition. The ability to move firearms from the right shoulder to the left shoulder and back has been added to the game. This can be useful when you want to fire from the left side while behind cover. Shoulder transition is available during walking, crouching, leaning, and other actions. Shoulder transition is not available while prone and overhead and side blind firing. The position of the weapon on the left shoulder imposes a penalty. The weapon has additional sway when moving. So yeah, hopefully this will help combat uh, right peak advantage. So if you have to do a left peak, it should hopefully make it a little bit better. But we never, I don't think we ever saw anyone ADSing whilst left peaking. It was always hip firing. Control settings. Warning, all control settings have been reset to default. For me, that's fine because the, I only have two keybinds. Added shoulder transition action to a default key is mouse four. That's the side button on the mouse, right? Mouse four. Or is it pressing the mouse wheel down? Mouse three is pressing the mouse wheel down. Mouse four is something on the side. What, if, what happens if you don't have a side mouse button? Added vaulting action default key to space. Press type is continuous. I actually don't mind that. So if you tap the space bar, it'll jump. If you hold the space bar, it'll vault. I'm okay with that. The jump action has been reassigned to space bar key with the release. Press type. Try these control settings in the, in the game before changing them. So yeah, I think if you just tap the space bar, it'll jump. And if you hold the space bar, it'll vault. Preset ammo loading. You can now save settings presets for ammunition loading into magazines sequentially, as well as quickly loading magazines using these presets. Players can name each preset, select the appropriate loading preset, view its contents and compare it to other loading presets. The magazine loading preset is divided into three blocks. Top, how many and which cartridges you would like, which will be at the top of the magazine belt, which cartridges will be first. Loop, how many and which cartridges will be cycled into the magazine belt, bottom. How many and which cartridges will be at the bottom of the magazine? Which cartridges will be last? You can create up to 30 unique magazine loading presets with a limit of five preset per caliber. So the idea of this is you can go high pen, high damage, high pen, high damage, high pen, high damage. I think it'll work in some situations, but you know when that guy's like running along and you're gonna one tap him in the head? I think it's gonna be really frustrating in that situation where you don't know if you've got in your chamber a high pen or a high damage. I, the only thing I would do with this personally is I would put five traces at the end. I would put five traces at the end of each mag 
everything high pen and then the highest pen tracer at the bottom of each mag. So then that way, you know, you're about to run out of ammo and you can reload before you empty. New recoil mechanics. Now this in the video did actually look good. The recoil mechanics have been improved to make it more realistic and comfortable for players. A special emphasis has been placed on improving the feel of semi-auto and short burst shooting. New recoil mechanics now includes a variety of flexible settings, allowing for balance adjustment based on analytical data and player feedback. All weapon recoil parameters have been rebalanced. The only, like, I think this, from the videos we saw in the in the trailer, this looks good and it looks a lot better. The only thing that I want to know, like, make note of is short burst shooting. I, I, I don't know anything in real life where I know of someone shooting on burst. The only time I've ever known in real life people shooting on burst in, in real life is when belt fed. Because you obviously you don't want to shoot single fire and belt. So you do the two to three, like two to three round burst or like three to five, depending on the gun. Or if you've got like a, um, uh, like a 50 cal, you do like 10 to 20 round burst. But like in like, I don't know, I know like MP5s and stuff have like burst mode. Maybe like it's not something I'm com like I, I know a lot about. But yeah, like if it makes it feel better, I've never used burst in Tarkov ever. The only time I've seen burst in video games work really well is Shroud on PUBG would use like burst on like an M16 and he would shred. He'd like tap it and he'd just destroy everyone. But yeah, anyway. I don't think they mean burst setting. You don't think they mean burst setting? And also short burst shooting. Yeah, look, in the, in the video we saw, in the video we saw the initial firing of the gun did not seem to have a giant kick in the, in the first couple of rounds where it was like overtly huge. Like overtly? It was obviously huge. When you shoot a gun in Tarkov normally, the first three rounds go like up into the fucking sky. Now that looks like it doesn't do as much of a jump, which is much better. Nothing about aim punch though. Look, mate, just fucking one battle at a time. Most people in real life, when they got shot, bro, they just fucking drop. They don't, they don't take 15 bullets while still firing back. Anyway, Lightkeeper surfaces. After completing certain Lightkeeper quests, you will be able to unlock access to the following services. Sacred Amulet services. Uh, Lightkeeper gives the character the item Sacred Amulet. While the character is wearing the amulet, all cultures on all locations do not attack unless provoked. Rogue support service. When a player purchases this service in that raid, rogues will not attack the player who ordered the service regardless of their faction. In addition, rogues will provide fire support by attacking targets that player who purchased the service has directed their attention to. Zarachi support service. When a player buys this service in that raid, Zarachi will support that player by firing at the targets that player is attacking. So I only feel like this one will be huge because you'll be able to get that on the on the Lightkeeper service and then he'll be on the island and you'll be able to like point at people and destroy him. Um, but this one, I've got no idea. Weapon rack, you can now add the displayed weapon to your favorites. These weapons would be displayed on your profile. This is cool. I like this. Everyone has their favorite gun. Mine's a 5.7. You gotta to put that on your profile. Viewable profiles, added the ability to view another player's profile page. In a player's profile page, you can view geared equipped by that player, brief statistics, rare achievements earned, favorite weapons displayed on the weapon rack, favorite items displayed in the Hall of Fame. Player profiles can be viewed on any screen of the game, including the raid exit screen after dying to another player. That is huge. That is actually huge. You know what would be actually really cool? Showing when you kill a player scav as well. Show the fucking player scavs and make it so we can actually see the... Uh, which, which player scavs we killed in raid? Because if you kill like 10 player scavs, it's kind of cool to know that you killed 10 player scavs and it'd be nice to know their names. Particularly if they're stream snobbing you all the time. But yeah, this um this could actually be really cool because you can go, oh, you know, I killed that player. He was a sussy. Next minute, you know, he's got a 400 KD and he's never died. You know, like might help to report people. Might not. I don't know. AI. Adjusted peaceful and combat behavior of AI when moving from one area to another within one location. Guess I have to wait and see. Uh, balancing changes to traders. Change the trader price and availability of ammo ammunition in the following calibers. That's everything. Uh, that is literally close to, if not everything. Change the trader prices and availability of armor on all loyalty levels. Adjusted various trader offers and barters of weapon attachments and other items. Cool. Oh, I just saw something. I, I, I sneaked ahead. Hopefully they've made it so stuff is able to be bought in more pa in more quantities. Balancing changes to quests. Expanded quest rewards. You will now be rewarded more often when unlocking previous avail unavailable trade offers, barters, ammo, and armor crafting recipes. Expanded quest rewards. You will now be rewarded more often with unlocking previously unavailable trade offers, barters, ammo, and so they've added a heap of new barter uh, new trades and offers to quests. They did that a few wipes ago where they made it so a lot of items were unlocked by quest. Now it looks like it's even more unlocked, which is cool. Change the order of Skier's quest, Friend from the West Part 2, and Setup. New order, Friend from the West Part 2, Setup, Inform means armed, Chumming, 
Wait, so setups heaps earlier? Setups like, isn't that the one where you got to use the shotguns on customs? And four means arms is placing down the Wi-Fi cams. Chumming is five PMC kills on any change of place and you have some gold chains. Bullshit is when you go into um, customs and you place down the stuff. And then silent caliber is suppressed shotguns. That's very different. But I, I used to, like not last wipe because it wasn't possible, but the previous wipes, I used to stack silent caliber and set up, set up together. Change the quest objectives. Four, Punisher Part 2, 4, and Tarkov Shooter Part 4. Tarkov Shooter Part 4 was um, get a certain level in snipers. If they've made this higher, that's horrible. If they made it lower, that's good. Punisher Part 2 is kill scavs with a um, suppressed gun on shoreline. Wasn't it suppressed? AKM's Part 1. EFT Wiki Punisher 2. Eliminate 12 scavs while using a suppressed weapon on shoreline. Chat. It was, it was kill 12 scavs suppressed. That's been changed. Punisher part four is kill 10 players on shoreline whilst wearing a scav vest and face cover. Tarkov shooter part four with sniper levels. So that's all been changed. We'll have to wait and see. It'll, I'll be there in like a day. I'll tell you tomorrow what time it is. Or what, what's the quest? Balancing changes to crafting. Adjusted armor crafts. Now to make an armor vest, you need to find a set of fabrics and ballistic plate that fits that form factor. Adjusted ammo crafts, reducing the production time and cost of cheap ammunition. But what about the good ammunition? Reduce the production time and cost of cheap ammunition. Maybe like that you no, don't need as much of the cheap ammunition to make the good ammo. Balancing changes to ammo. The damage and armor pen parameters of different calibers have been revised and adjusted. Ugh, that's going to take some learning. Punisher part four is now going to be kill 10 players while hitting the lower back plate and has to be below 50% durability. Yeah, that sounds very hot. Balancing changes to muzzle devices. The muzzle device has been rebalanced. Suppressors, muzzle adapters, flash hiders, and compensators. Cool. BTR. Oh, there's so many things. It's good that there's so many things. <laughs> they've probably added um they've probably added durability to suppressors. We'll see. BTR. A BTR has been added to the streets of Tarkov, traveling between different stop points in the city. BTR driver offers various services to his passengers. Taxi service. The player can travel to any point in the city in total safety, which is cool. Move items to stash service. This is the huge one. This means you can farm for a whole hour. The player can send orders to the stash with the status found in raid. This service is available only for PMCs. This is huge. It's obviously going to cost something, but I'm going to do it all the time. Cover fire service. The player can order covering fire with the help of the BTR weaponry, which provides the safest possible drop off at the stopping point. The service is available only after purchasing the taxi service. The service is available for only for PMCs. List of stop points. The hotel, the cinema, the crane, the complex, the tram, the city. This will actually be good if you've got a quest and you're like, I just take the BTR to get to the extract and then get out. I don't find streets that too hard of a map, but it's it's this moving items to stash is going to be huge. The BTR is neutral to all players unless a player starts attacking it first. If someone uh, purchases the covering fire service, the BTR becomes hostile. When the service ends, the BTR becomes neutral to all players again. The cost of the service depends on faction. Bear, Usex, Scav. Scav, Karma, Charisma, Skill, Level, and Travel Distance. So this will be your time to shine bear. Most likely, it's going to be cheaper to bear, I'd imagine. Quality of life. The visual effects of painkillers has been changed. Thank the Lord. Please not back to what it was previously, but still something better. The door to the expanded part of the hideout is now always open after construction. Nice. Change the camera system in the hideout from rail to free cam. To move in... Oh, okay. To move in space, WASD, to rotate camera, hold middle mouse button to move mouse movement. So you're not going to have to, you know, like you press W and it flips over to the other side. You're just going to be able to WASD around that the whole thing. Cool. List of changes. Fix several visual bugs and artifacts on streets and shoreline. Fixed incorrect spawn points on random containers in all locations. A problem that led to the lack of damage registration from melee weapons in some classes. Fixed incorrect behavior of rogues when attacking the hangar buildings on Lighthouse. Fixed an issue where killed bots would remain standing. Fixed the lack of muzzle flash when looting, sorry, looking at a shooting player. Fixed AI behaviors when interacting with stationary weapons. Fixed incorrect values of some parameters in character statistics. Fixed incorrect camera behavior in the hideout when scrolling the UI. Uh, fixed compatibility issues with weapon attachments. Fixed the ability to hear outdoor sounds while inside the bunker and reserve. Cool. Well, that's all the changes. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hopefully you liked all the breakdown of all the, all the patch notes and the trailer viewing. Hopefully it's been uh, an exciting patch notes for you and you're excited to check it out. My key takeaways, I'm excited to see the new map. I like the idea of it. I think it's going to be really good for new players and it's going to be uh, make it a lot more valuable for people that are getting into Tarkov to try and learn the game. Uh, I think the BTR with the actual loot extract from 
Streets is going to be huge. And what else? The recall. The recall is going to be massive. I think it's going to make PvP a lot more fun. The armor system and all that, I think it's going to be a little bit to get used to. But overall, I think it's probably going to be one of the bigger patches that we've seen in a while. And uh, hopefully you guys are excited for it too. I'm currently running a subathon on my stream. I'm giving away five computers on the 5th of January. Pop into the stream, enter the giveaway, and come be a part of the fun. There's going to be drops from the 29th. I don't know who's on when and how it's all going to work. But most likely, everyone will have the first 24 hours. So come check out my stream. Uh, get some free items on the 29th of December. I'll be live most likely still, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Besides that, make sure you like and comment for the YouTube algorithm. Help me get to a million subs in 2024. I'm actually going to be putting a lot more focus and guides out on uh, YouTube in 2024, and we'll be doing hardcore again, of course. Anyway, that's it for me. Hopefully, you guys are excited for the wipe. Come pop into the stream, and lastly, I'll see you next time.